Four continental teams. Three challenges, two stunning locations, and one winner. This is the Obsidian Team Challenge. Welcome to New Zealand's Southern Lakes for the Obsidian Challenge, the finale of the Winter Games at NZ. Three teams of eight athletes have migrated south from Europe, Asia and the Americas to take on the hosts, Oceania, in three competitions, Big Air, Park Challenge and Backcountry Freestyle. In Big Air, the Americas were dominant, winning three of the four categories and taking a statement win. Sven Thorgren's win in the snowboard men's category helped Europe claim second. Oceania took third and an Asian team struck by illness and injury were fourth. The park challenge was a frantic hour-long session for the snowboarders first and then the skiers. Europe were triumphant in the snowboarding. Ruby Andrews and Finn Billis made sure that Oceania was still in the mix, but again, it was the strength and depth of the Americas that saw them come out on top. Ahead of the third and final event, the Americas lead on 50, but it's still very tight with Europe close behind on 57 and Oceania in third on 65. Asia battling with injuries, a trailing on 85. The winner of the Edgar Challenge Trophy would be decided by the Backcountry Freestyle Day. The event would see all four teams traveling to the Minaret Range of New Zealand's Southern Alps, an hour north of Wanaka. The format was a filming contest, the only rule being that every member of the team would have to bank at least two clips. This meant that they would have to work together to find terrain and build jumps that would allow everyone to excel. It would be the ultimate test of the teams. Get out of the shop! The teams would get priority to choose their zone in order of their standings, which meant the Americas would choose first. Lots of options, kind of endless playground. <laughs> the Europeans knew that to give themselves the best chance of winning, they would have to choose the opposite venue to the Americans. Americans get dropped on the right side, we want to be up there. Yeah. Oceania's secret weapon was Finn Billis, one of the most experienced backcountry operators in the entire field. I reckon that zone in there looks sick, and because yeah. even this, like, this stuff, does that hit? Yeah. There's some cool stuff in here. Eh. Nanka, hit dekhi so na tokoro wa ariso da kedo. Nanka, do yatte, yare, do yatte yatta ra ika, chotto sozo tsukanai kan. Nick Hubert knew exactly what he wanted to do. I, I want to build a big jump to do a big trick. That's the goal. Even the Americas were milking Finn for intel. All right, now you got to tell me what your gut instinct is. What's your gut telling you right now? Um, well, I would assume it's love. someone's going to hit the ET jump, though, like that main one. Yeah, is that landing flat and it looks flat? Huh? It's pretty flat, but it's a yeah. real easy build because it's like yeah, you already get the wind, yeah. Yeah. like lots of That's wind on there. Working in the same area, Europe were keen on an alliance with Oceania. Maybe like we can also, if we split stuff or we could like at least try to do stuff together, I think it would be cool, no? Have we chin wag? Sounds good. No chance, mate. Get over here, bro. <laughs> Europe got shuttled to the nearest peak first and therefore were the first group to drop. Sven Thorgren opened the big face, found a lovely nose in the middle of the venue. He logged a backside 360, followed by some beautiful turns. Europe were up and running. Annie Carava followed him in. Nick Hubert, meanwhile, had taken the rest of the crew to a windlip drop with a very icy takeoff, but a powder landing. It kicked up a half decent cloudburst, too. Mia Brooks, Europe's least experienced backcountry rider, was next.
She might not have landed, but the stoke was high. With Huber's encouragement, the rest of the team threw down and continued down the face to look for the site of their first jump. The Americas were first to drop on the rider's right-hand side of the venue and had a ready-made kicker to start in the shape of the legendary E.T. Booter, which Max Moffat very kindly put the line into. A-Hall went first and put in a wonderfully composed 360. But with adrenaline trumping control, both Elena and Liam Brearley went way too big. Oh, no. Elena on the three, Liam Brearley on the front side five. Fun to be cruising with everyone and push each other to hit jumps that make us a little nervous out here, but having a good time. Cam Spaulding managed to get it back under control though with a beautiful backside 360 Weddell. Megan Oldham was next in. Not quite the landing she was looking for. Next in was Jasmine Baird. She took it a little steadier and put down that melon. Finally, Momo Maha. A lovely frontside air to finish. That was sick. Can there be slam clips? Following Europe down the riders left of the venue was Oceania and Dane Menzies opened in style. <laughs> Grabby Snow saw Ruby Andrews get hooked. But she made amends with her turns lower down. Cool Wakashima then headed straight for the nose and got ragdolled. <laughs> Daisy Thomas was next, and just like Ruby, she got hung up in the difficult snow, but pulled off an impressive save to avoid the nose. Tian Collins opened with a beautiful rooster tail. Had a bit of a waggle to get the landing gear down and then went for the mother of all butters. Oh. And maybe just saved it. The pick of the first drop, though, undoubtedly was Finn Billis, whose experience and style shone through from the start. A perfectly measured cross-court backside 360 into a face-long manual. That is how you do it. Last to drop, Asia followed the Americas into the ET booter. And it was all or nothing. Frontside double cork 10 attempt from Ryoma Kimata. Sensei Nishizuka had a flail. Mari Fukada very nearly put down a front three but went over the bars. And Ollie Nichols over rotated this flat three. They would need to calm things down if they were going to land anything. Back on the left side of the venue, Europe had started construction on a kicker that would become affectionately known as the Eiffel Tower for its sheer size and beauty. It was an ambitious build. Get it right and it could be epic. On the other side of the face, the Americas weren't hanging around. They already had two builds running simultaneously. We have a little wind lift. We've kind of put right. together skiers, a little bit smaller, and then we have another one over there that A-Hall's setting up. So kind of all working together to get the best little setups throughout the course for everyone comfortable to hit. Phew! After a quick pat down, they were off and stomping. Max led the way with a backy. Momo flattered with a perfect imitation. Jasmine got worked under rotating this one but hiked back up for another shot. Elena got a shifty, and Jasmine got redemption with a nose bone. Down on their second hit, a hastily patted down rock drop, Liam Brearley was getting to work with the cab five. A-Hall banked to switch three. Cam Spaulding fell on a front five. As did Max Moffat on a flat three. 
Jasmine went for a big half cab. Megan Oldham got a tail grab. And Elena a shifty. Max had hiked up for another go at the flat three. And while he couldn't stick it, it was clear the Americas had got a lot done in a short space of time. I'm stoked. I feel like we've been pretty productive. And yeah, the, the next heli bump to the top is going to be sick. I'm, I'm excited. Following Europe down the left side of the venue, Team Oceania weighed up their options. The European team is going to build that first hit already that we were looking at. So there's a, a pretty nice little windlet right, right below us. Kind of thinking, make the most of this gully while no one else is here. Their first choice was this highway build into the windlet. <laughs> Further down the gully, Finn and Ben were scoping out a second quarter pipe hit. He's the main guy. <laughs> Leading. <laughs> Look at him go. Yeah. <laughs> That's the secret call. Look busy. As Finn Billis guinea pig the first hit, third choice on the venue was starting to look like a blessing in disguise. Oceana were ready to start sessioning two hits. With the last pick of the venues, Asia was struggling with both terrain and snow quality. And as a result, they were also struggling to land anything. Yeah. Meanwhile, Team Europe's Eiffel Tower kicker was looking stunning. But with the other teams making so much progress, you had to wonder if they weren't taking too long making sure everything was perfect. Make sure this doesn't break on us. <laughs> Sven's going to pat the whole thing down by hand. Hopefully, they'll get started soon. Just over in the next gully, Oceania were getting into the meat of their first session. Ben Barkley stomped to three. Tion Collins went for a rodeo five. Dane Menzies put down a double backy. <laughs> Finn Billis nailed a right blunt seven. Daisy Thomas went for a big three as did Ruby Andrews. Next in was called Wakashima. Oh. It was a heavy heel edge catch, and Cool had heard a crack in her neck as she hit. Do you think you can move or you don't want to move? No, I think I can move. I, just... I need to shake it off. <laughs> no? After a conversation with the guide, the slope doctor was called down. After a strong start, the Americas had worked their way down to the bottom of the slope. The problem was they were running out of terrain and sessioning ever smaller hits. And as anyone who's ever filmed anything will tell you, it's always quality over quantity. Back with Oceania, and the doctor had made the decision to err on the side of caution and evacuate Cool for a more thorough examination of the injury. Having lost both Cool and valuable time, Team Oceania decided to pivot and focus on a different objective. You happy to hit your yeah. little money booter? Yes. Yeah. Followed by the girls doing a train through the top jump, and then Finny B slashing here. I'm going to hit this jump, and then T's going to wrap it up in the quarter. So Oceania are going to attempt to get the entire team doing tricks in a single shot. It's an admirable goal on paper, but notoriously difficult to pull off in practice. The one in one million shot, everyone perfectly in sync and stomping first go. Dude. 
<laughs> that was insane. Yeah, yeah, come have a look, Daisy. Oh, Dane's a sick. Yeah. Great turn. Through the slash, and then boink. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Oh, one take. I reckon Oceania on top, just give us the win. From the pits of despair to the highest of highs in one shot, Oceania are back in the game. And with renewed morale, they set about the terrain with everyone banking some stunning clips. After a getting to know you period, Team Asia finally started clicking with their kicker and landing some tricks. Ollie Nichols got a powder butter straight into a flat three. Mary Fukada got a back three and then this carve to revert and pulled out this cab five. She also got a backside 180 and a beautiful backflip. Finally, Europe's Eiffel Tower build is finished. And while the other teams are thinking about their second lifts, Europe are only just getting started. The big question was, would the hours invested in the build be worth it? The question was answered instantly by Sven Thorgren with a graceful method. Then Ferdy's 720. Yuna's floated three. Mia's method. Annie's shifty tail grab and Annika's back three. Six out of the eight strong teams stomping tricks and the hits kept coming. Sven found his feet and sent a front three really deep. Ferdy then went all in for this bio dub 10, but couldn't quite stick it. Yuna then went searching for the end of the landing and just about found it with this seven. And then Sven bought the heat with a front side 1080 and landed it first try. Yes, stop. It inspired Ferdy into another swing at the dub 10. What a lap, Sven, Barfin. It was an incredible level of riding, but don't take it from me or Ferdy. You can hear it from one of the most experienced guides in the game, Tarn Pilkington. Oh, so awesome. You know, this is a run we ski all the time, and then we bring some athletes like this into it, and it's like, you know, they just transform what's possible. The third time it was a charm for Ferdy on the 10. Stomped. Europe had two tens in the bank. Mia stomped to backside 360 Indy. Julia got a sweet grab. Hubercop was hunting for a backside seven, but couldn't make it stick. Ferdy somehow stomped this ludicrous 540. Annika Morgan then switched it up with a front three, while Hubercop also switched to a front seven, but he couldn't land it. He tried again and nearly had it. But like Ferdy, he nailed it at the third time of asking. Annie then claimed this effortless 360 before Yuna put the session to bed with this immaculate left seven poke. America, get ready. <laughs> Starting their second lap, the Americas would have another shot at the big natural ET kicker. Although they didn't know it, their lead was hanging in the balance. They needed some big hits if they were to compete with their closest rivals, Europe. The apex predator, A. Hall, was first in with a butter off the drop. Into a lovely left seven. Elena Gaskill greased the drop and then sent the kicker, but couldn't hold the landing. Cam Spalding went half cab to back seven and rode away clean. Jasmine Baird went for a front three but corked it a little too much. Megan Oldham was next and held on to this three. Liam Brearley was next in and went for a back three off the cliff. Then set up for a huge front seven and claimed it hard with good reason. Max Moffat had put his free ride pants on and went high off the rock drop. He then drove hard down to the kicker 
for a big right seven. Another trick banked. <laughs> the Americas then got another bite of their rock drop, a hall bagging a three. Max scored that flat three he missed on the first round. Liam then ghosted a switch back one, and Cam nailed a super corked back three. Yeah! They finished with a party shred gap, a hall over Cameron Spaulding. It was a very solid second lap. Just behind the Americas and with renewed confidence having just got some tricks landed were Team Asia. Ollie Nichols went first, sent it and crashed. Mary Fukada survived the run-in for a beautiful front three but went over the bars on the landing. Next in was Ryoma Kimata, who went to the stratosphere with this frontside 720. So unlucky not to put it down. The last to drop was Zensei Nishizuka, and he fell on his hand drag up top. So in a bid to make amends, he pinned it at the kicker. It was massive the biggest air of the day, and unfortunately detonated on landing. But come on, let's have another look at it. It's too big not to enjoy again. Oceania, meanwhile, were in deep discussion about where to head for their final hits. Yeah. yeah. I was looking at that band far left as well. Yeah, yeah. that one? Just like something different. And the discussion paid off with a cheeky rock drop. Finn giving it the handspring. Ruby, the switch one. Tian, a butter swack one. And Daisy, a front flip. After a quick train, they started the session on their final feature. Ben Barkley scored a hand drag three. Tian got a beautiful butter swack five. Finn got the hand drag five deep into the landing. And Dane Menzies locked in a front seven lead. Ruby Andrews got a lovely shifty. And Daisy Thomas shut it down with a safety grab. The only box they hadn't ticked was the classic New Zealand tussock ride. So Finn and Ben ticked it off. just to put your minds at rest as well. Cool Wakashim was flown down to the nearest hospital in Queenstown and given scans and x-rays, and they found no serious injuries. Without a second bump in the heli, Europe had bought themselves some time. Three of the team, Nick Huber, Annie Carava and Julia Tano, were a little light on clips, so the team set about making sure they had another chance with another jump. Nick went first, switch back one. To double backflip attempt, the first time he'd ever tried that trick. And he went all in on the whip takeoff and stomped to Baki. Followed straight away by Julia. But the last drop of the day would belong to Hoover. Switch back one. Into a stomped double backflip, and Europe went wild. Their hoots and cheers echoing across to the other teams. The train down to the heli was pure joy for a team who had worked so hard and accomplished so much. Spirits were deservedly high. There was no doubt that Europe had done well, but every team's approach had its merits. The judges started by looking at the individual athlete performances. The women's free ski saw Annie Carava come out on top ahead of Megan Oldham, Daisy Thomas and Ruby Andrews. In the men's free ski, Ferdy Dahl's 10 had worked hard and gave him the win ahead of Finn Billis. But with Eunuch Angus in third, critically, Europe had managed to keep the Americas off the podium. In the women's snowboarding, Annika Morgan and Mia Brooks made it a 1-2 for Europe, with Mary Fukada in third and Momo Maha only managing fourth. In the men's snowboarding, it was a similar story. Europe again taking the win through Sven Thorgren, Dane Menzies in second, and Cameron Spaulding in third. 
On top of the individual performances, the judges also looked at how well the teams worked together and supported each other. In this round, Oceana came first, Europe second, the Americas third, and Asia fourth. So the scores for the backcountry meant that Europe took the win ahead of Oceania in second, the Americas in third, and Asia in fourth. Those points were then added to the overall rankings, which meant Asia were in fourth. Oceania came in third. The Americas finished second with 88, but 10 points in front, Europe would take the win for the inaugural Obsidian Team Challenge, a hard-won victory for the team who had bonded so well and supported each other from start to finish.